uh, with Johnny and uh, and Darren just at the moment. The official placings are 14, 15 and 1, 14, 15 and 1. Uh, fourth was number four, which was Rubidium. Fifth, number seven, Arctic Scent. The time, very quick. Two minutes, 1.5. And for a race that we thought was so open, Peter Donegan, it was amazing to think a horse that could win by over three or four lengths. Yes, it was. Patrick Highland has just come down here. That was a brilliant effort. Yes, oh, she's a good filly, Pete. I mean, uh, I wondered whether we should have had her in the race. Nobody seemed to want to know about her, but she... Uh, you know, her runs have been excellent right from her first run in a race. I mean, that's... She's won a check every time she's gone round. And she had to do it at both ends, really, because when you draw a wide gate, you've, you've got to go quickly early, and then yeah. uh, she exploded at the 400. She rode her very well. Um, I liken her very much to a mare, a filly I rode years ago, Rom Stiletto. Mm. And uh, I had a long talk to my old mentor last night, Jim Maloney, and uh, we discussed the riding tactics of it. But I didn't ride her, I didn't ride Rom Stiletto as well in this race as, I, as he did. Rob Stiletto was an, was an Oaks filly. She this? ran second in this race, Rob Stiletto, yeah. and she won the Oaks, yeah. yeah. But and she's a very good filly, this. And the extra distance shouldn't be a problem the way she went to the line. It's OK. Good on you, Paddy. Thanks, Pete. Pat Highland. The winning trainer with Sally is most impressive in the Wakeful Stakes. Second, not on Friday, 15. And third, number one, Pontal Lass. And the time for the journey, 2-1.5. Have we seen the Oaks winner? Well, we'll find out on Thursday. But in the meantime, we'll take a break. due for a special day and we've certainly got one at Flemington this year for Amy Darby Day 1995 and seeing some absolutely sensational racing the first four races on the program today we're awaiting correct weight from Mr Lawler and there it is the time honored ritual up they go on the scales Mr Lawler checks them and he looks pretty happy we've come to know his body language over the last few years he'll raise the finger there it is. We have correct weight. That means we can pay you some money. These are Victorian dividends, of course. Here's Dan Malik. Salius, $20.10 for the win. $6 even the place. Not on Friday, $2.50. And Pontel Lass at $3. The Quinella paid $59.20. The trifecta, $1,210 even, and the race to race double, $528.10. Pete, I mentioned the time. It was actually the quickest ever Wakeful Stakes run. Well, that's a pretty good indicator going into uh, Thursday for Salius and also for Pontel Lass. And uh, there is Salius. And with me now is a gentleman who's going to have a big task on Tuesday, the man who'll be riding the Melbourne Cup favourite double trigger, Jason Weaver. Jason, welcome to Flemington. Thank you very much. What are your impressions of uh, this great race day? Well, uh, we travelled on the train, which was an experience, and that was real good, a bit like the tube back in England, but all the ladies looking fine and everything. And uh, it's a beautiful race course. You must be looking forward to Tuesday. You rode double trigger in his serious gallop yesterday, and he looks a magnificent race horse. Yeah, um, he strolled out well yesterday morning, and all signs are good for Tuesday. You really won't know how he settled in, though, will you, until Tuesday? No, I mean, you can... All the visual signs, it's just... I mean, if we could look inside him, we'd be all right, or if they could talk, but he seems well enough. I asked you during the week, and I'll ask you again, what have you heard about the Melbourne Cup? It really is a carnival in more ways than one. Well, if they say the crowd uh, on Tuesday is two times this and a bit more, I can imagine it being a phenomenon. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesday, and it's great to have the international representation here at Flemington with uh, all of the jockeys, Frankie Dottori coming out of and who you know very well, of course. Yeah, we're real good buddies, uh, me and Frankie. I don't think we'll uh, get a chance to go out as he's making a super flying visit and then back off to Milan. The best of luck on Tuesday. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Great, thanks very much. Jason Weaver joining us, and the man who's preparing Double Trigger is now with Tim Webster. Indeed he is, Peter. I have Mark Johnston with me. Welcome. Thank you. Did, uh, first thing we should say, he's without a doubt one of the most beautiful looking animals I think I've ever seen. He's a great looking racehorse, isn't he? Yeah, we hear mixed views on that. I think somebody said the other day that, uh, that he was like a, a lean greyhound and vintage <laughs> crop was the class horse. I think as a staying horse goes, yeah. he's just about everything you could ask for. Yes, he's a beautiful looking beast. OK, did he work this morning? Do anything this morning? No, he's just a gentle walk and trot after Jason gave him a, a fast blow yesterday. Yeah, well, as Jason was just discussing with Pete um, 
you're happy with him at this point in time, but uh, you really won't know till Tuesday. Will yeah, you? We, we really don't know. You know, we're we're living very much in the dark. We watched Quick Ransom, my old yes, horse, course, yeah. working this morning, and it's so different when you're preparing a horse at home, and you know how much work to give it. Uh, we watched Quick Ransom do just over a lap of Sandown, whereas Double Trigger was doing little more than four and a half furlongs, about mm. 900 metres, which is nothing for him. It's not enough, really, to get him into his stride, but we're so nervous of doing too much with him sure, because they've yeah. had such a long flight, so it's hard to judge. Speaking of the flight, uh, I remember watching him in, on our programme, Sports Tonight, coming off the aeroplane, and he just looked completely relaxed. He must have travelled pretty well. He is very, very relaxed, and that's very helpful. That's a great sign. We've seen a little problem the last couple of days that he's not been relaxed in his box. He's been... Yeah. Uh, getting bit, a bit uh, warm towing. tonight, yeah, yeah. but otherwise good. Speaking of relaxed, uh, there's the Prime Minister's wife, Anita Keating, there, obviously enjoying uh, Derby Day. Yeah, well, I was about to talk to you about uh, Quick Ransom. Did you give a little uh, a pang there of, uh, there's my old horse when you saw him today? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. I don't think Australian people really understand yet what Quick Ransom was at home. Mm. Uh, he one of the most, well, he's earned more than any other horse in handicaps in Europe. And he was a very, very special horse to us. We bought him for very little money. Mm. He, he won a fortune by British standards. Mm. And sad to see him over here, really. <laughs> well, I bet you're sad to see him over here. He'll be if he beats us. <laughs> Back to Double Trigger, because I know our viewers are going to want to know about him. And you're, you're saying he's getting a bit toey in the box. Uh, Maybe he just wants to get out. Maybe he wants to get out and show him what he can do. Yeah, there's no doubt that there's a yeah. big change in him. When I arrived on Wednesday, he looked a bit too laid back and a bit yeah. too quiet. Um, since then, he's been very much on his toes, and I think that's the arrival of Jason Weaver really did that. He's not too used to being partnered by Jason unless there's something serious going on. Jason's ridden him in all but one of his, his races. And yeah. So his arrival and the fact that he sat on him two mornings in a row at Sandown, that seems to have fired the horse up a bit. All right, you just stay there. I've got uh, Peter Donegan and Jenny Chapman down there if there's anything they want to ask you, but uh, we just sort of weave our conversation with you over the next couple of minutes, if you don't mind. Pete and Jen. Yes, um, first of all, Mark, we've spoken to you out there. He uh, has got the appearance that he's starting to grow his winter coat. Does that mean anything? I really don't think he is growing a winter coat. I made the comment that he changed colour, mm. and that concerned me slightly when I arrived. You know, I was hoping to see him looking his usual bright chestnut, and he's looking a bit too chocolatey, really, to be ideal. But if you look at his coat, is there's a great shine in it, and uh, certainly a long way off needing to clip him or anything like that. Uh, last year we had to clip Quick Ransom before he left, and then again when he got here. So we're a lot better off than last year, and I'm not worried about the condition of his coat at all. I suppose the good sign is that he's trying to bite you at every opportunity because he loves having a go at you. I'd like to thank... All right, well, uh, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be a, a great draw card here on uh, on Tuesday, Jen. Absolutely. Can't wait to see him in the flesh, double trigger. There's so much talk about him. What he's done overseas has been sensational. Very lightly raced, but very good horse. Yeah, Tim, I think we're going to see a terrific horse on, uh, sort of on Tuesday now, race. Yeah, I think you uh, you missed that, but Peter was just saying yeah, that he's was... trying to bite everything, so he must be pretty happy. Yeah, he's usually like that at home. And I think just after the Prix de Cadran, which was the race which... Uh, really <laughs> almost stopped him coming to the Melbourne Cup. He was a bit quiet and he, he really wasn't himself. It's good to see him grabbing a hold of everything that gets too close to him. <laughs> Just stay there for a second. We'll, uh, we'll take a break and come back and have a chat to you some more. And don't forget, of course, on Network 10, we've got a Melbourne Cup preview. Uh, check your local guide for the time. It'll be around the midday mark as we take a break from Flint. Flemington on Amy Derby Day 1995. I have uh, Double Trigger's trainer Mark Johnston with me. Just one final thing I wanted to, to run past you. I've heard people say to me that uh, the horse is going to win the race by an awfully long margin, but we know that uh, that depends on how he feels on the day. I've heard others say he's the best horse that uh, Britain has produced for 15 years. Where does he sit in your training experience, Double Trigger? Yeah, well, obviously I haven't been around that long as a yeah. trainer. Um, nine years now, starting from scratch. Yeah. Um, he's certainly one of the two best horses that I've had, and as a steer, mm. he's quite exceptional. He probably is the, well, the triple best horse crown winner, seen. so he's got to be pretty yeah, good. He, he's very, very good. I don't think we have any doubts about that, no matter what happens on Tuesday. OK, thanks for joining us, and all the best on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Thank Double, you. Double Trigger's trainer, Mark Johnston, joining us. Well, we're only 20 minutes away from...
from this year's Amy Victoria Derby and what a race it promises to be. In fact, it always does. In the meantime, here's a chance for you to win our Crown Fashion Competition just by voting for the fashions of your choice. Three top designers starting... Uh, we're supposed to be presenting the jockeys at the moment, we haven't got them here, but we can start because we have Shane Scriven, who's riding octagonal today. It could be his lucky day because, of course, Darren Gouchy fell in the first race. Shane Scriven is behind me. Shane, of course, is a leading rider from Queensland, and it's probably his lucky day because he's landed the ride on octagonal, the best three-year-old in Australia. Yes, he certainly is. He, uh, he proved that uh, last week at Mooney Valley, winning the, the best race in Australia. So he's back against his own age group here. So hopefully we can put a derby on the mantelpiece as well. Do you believe in uh, lucky omens? I mean, it's bad luck for Darren, but of course you're in the right spot at the right time. Yes, I can certainly say I feel very sorry for Darren and I do hope he's, uh, he's A-OK. -okay, but um, I've been in his spot plenty of time and a little bit of sun shining down on me. Maybe it's my turn. It's an up and down game, the old life of a jockey, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. What goes around comes around. Coming in the mounting yard now for the Thank Amy Shane. Victoria Derby. Horses are coming in, but we can go quickly through the jockeys. Principality's jockey is Michael Clark. He's behind me, please step forward. Riding nothing like a Dane is Shane Dye from Sydney. Donar is Greg Hall from Melbourne, of course. Burrito is Brian York. Please raise your whip. A bit shy, these jockeys, today. El Cahira's son is Patrick Payne. Cattle at opening, also the champion jockey from Melbourne, Damien Oliver. Riding Sky Bow is Danny Nikolic. Riding Zoff Coast is Darren Biedman, who's on fire today, of course. Shiri Nelg is written by Rod Griffiths. And Sir Macklin, of course, the senior member of the jockey establishment today, Mick Detman. Congratulations and good luck. And that concludes the jockey presentation. Thank you very much. Richard, thank you very much. Uh, I think we sort of tipped him into it a bit there. They weren't quite prepared for us, but uh, we got there anyway. This race course, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely steeped in history. As I said at the beginning of the program, the Victoria Derby is not won by good horses. It is won by great horses. Let's have a look at the history of this marvellous race. Six years before Archer won the first Melbourne Cup, the first Victoria Derby was run. Only eight three-year-olds were competing. To the dismay of the owners, trainers and jockeys, two of the Colts left the track and didn't complete the race. The first Derby was won by Rose of May for the stake money of £100. And they're off and racing For four years now, the race has been the Amy Victoria Derby, and a prize purse of more than $800,000 helps to make it one of the most prestigious and significant derbies in the world. It's a classic race based on the classic races of England. A race for three-year-olds at set weights over a distance of 2,500 metres, a little more than one and a half miles. The derby has been won by some of the greatest champions of the turf, including the immortal Farlap, Comic Court, Tullock and Dulcify. But the three-year-olds are not the only champions who win the derby. The classic has been dominated by three of Australia's legendary trainers, Colin Hayes, Bart Cummings and Tommy Smith. Last year saw victory for Blevick and David Hayes and a new generation joined the honour roll in a classic race for classy horses. The Amy Victoria Derby. Yes, absolutely, and it's not far away now. And there's the scene here at Flemington. And it's really just a beautiful day. This time around in 1995. And aren't we pleased about that, Peter Donegan? We certainly are, Tim, and it's a great scene looking from there and looking from where we are, which is in that area there, with these magnificent three-year-olds as they prepare for the start of the Amy Victoria Derby. 
It started six years before the Melbourne Cup, Jen, as we've just seen it's steeped in history and I think we're going to see one of the better derbies of recent years today. I think so, Pete, because uh, originally everyone thought it was probably a race in two with Octagonal and nothing like a dame, but I've got to say that I think there's a little bit more depth involved here and there's a number of horses at good odds with good chances. OK, let's start them off with the Cox Plate winner, Octagonal. What a terrific run it was last week under the care of Shane Dye, of course, uh, today. The riders taken by Steve Scriven, uh, Shane Scriven after Darren Gauchy had to go to hospital earlier. So it's Shane Scriven aboard octagonal number one. And if he's won the Cox Plate, he's entitled to be favourite in the derby. Absolutely, Pete. He's a very, very smart racehorse octagonal. Um, you know, he won the Cox Plate with authority. Admittedly, he had 58 and a half, 48 and a half. Um, I've got to say, if there's only one query about him, can he get this distance, the 2,500? There's no guarantee that he can, but he's very, very good. Yeah, I think a lot's going to depend on how the race is run too, Jen. Number two, Principality, Michael Clark, trained by Peter Hayes, and that man there on screen had a fair bit of success about five years ago. David Hayes, he won six races here on Derby Day. Well, Principality, he shaped like a stayer at Geelong. It was a pretty good effort. Very good effort there. He just kept going right towards the line, and I thought he went very well, Pete. I think uh, this time in, this horse has been racing like a real stayer, and this distance of 2,500, well, you know he's going to get it, and he'll keep batting away towards the finish. He's not without a chance. Speaking of stayers, this bloke looks a real stayer to me. Number three, nothing like a day. And Shane Dye is the rider, and he won the Spring Champion Stakes, of course, and then came to Caulfield, won the Norman Robinson. 2,500 metres, I don't think, will be a problem to him. I think Shane is going to have to put the pressure on Octagonal and the others a fair way from home if he's to use his staying ability, though. Yes, this horse has uh, been most impressive. He's won his last three, Pete. Um, he just has kept on improving. He's screaming out for this distance, 2,500. He's got it here today. Been trained to the minute, minute by Gay Waterhouse. A terrific chance in the race. Number four is Donar. Greg Hall have got the ride. And uh, John Hawks, the trainer, said he wanted an informed jockey. He's got one in Greg Hall. And this horse looked pretty good in winning the Amy Vars at Mooney Valley. I just wonder whether he can tip out his stable mate octagonal here. Well, he did look good, and when he got to the front at Mooney Valley when he won that race, he did start to lose a little bit of concentration, but he did win it with authority. He had every chance to start before that in the Caulfield Stakes. That was at Wait for Age. I just wonder whether or not he's quite up to a couple of these. I've, gave, I've given him a place chance in the race. The other one of John Hawke's three runners, number five, Burrito, Brian York, the rider, over something shocking after missing the start at Mooney Valley, Jen, and he's a horse that likes to be up on the speed. Yes, he's the likely leader here, Burrito, and I do give him a chance as well in this race because if you go back three starts ago at Mini Valley, he led and he had it all his own way. He was tackled um, and he fought off the challenges. I thought it was a good effort. If he gets his own way here, he's not out of it either. He's probably on a leader's track that day, though. That's the only worry, I suppose. Well, that's true, Pete, but uh, he's a strong horse and he does keep going, so I, I think he's not the roughest in the race by any means. El Cahira's son's probably got a chance on its third to Donar at Mooney Valley. Patrick Payne, the rider, and Tommy Hughes, the trainer. Being quite consistent this horse this time in. The only thing is I believe he's probably one or two lengths below some of these horses. I, I, I'd give him another place chance in the race. Racing well enough but uh, maybe not just for the win here. On the weights Jen and uh, you can see El Cahira's son just going off there when the fanfare sounded. So uh, he's settled down all right now. He's not too bad. Uh, number seven, a Catalan opening can't win on the weights but uh, weights don't always work out and he was very close to nothing like a day in the other day. Well you can see this horse hasn't got the blinkers on since he's had them off, he has been settling a lot better in his races. I think this horse, uh, you go on his last three runs, has been beaten by nothing like a Dane each time, and he's up against him again here, so I give him a place chance at best. Sky by number eight to be ridden by Danny Nikolic as well. It's past two, but a big jump up in class here. Yes, he, he's racing a, a pretty well in a lot weaker class, Pete, and it's, as you said, a big step up here for him in the derby. I don't think he's probably good enough here. And yeah, probably the same applying to number nine, Zoff Coast. It's uh, a one pacer, Darren Beatman, the rider, and Steve Richards, the trainer. Well, I didn't mind his run at Geelong. It was a fair run there. That was in the Derby trial, of course. Uh, he got back and he made some ground, but it's hard to see him turning the tables on the winner, Principality. Siri Nelg, number 10, finished third in that race at Geelong. And uh, Rod Griffiths is fit and is riding. Well, yes, and this horse is probably, well, arguably, one of Australia's best three-year-old maidens. He's run some terrific races. And uh, it's not before that the Derby hasn't been won by maidens either. You look back at five. 
Fire Oak and yeah, a couple in recent yes, years. Yes, absolutely. Well, number 12, Sir Magwin, the last one, trained by Leon Corstens, who of course is now out on his own after being foreman for Bart Cummings for a long time. Mick Dittman, the rider, looked the winner in the Derby trial, but just didn't finish off his race. I think there was an excuse, Pete, the fact being that it was only his fourth start in the race. He was stepping up to the 2,200 metres. I think he's a promising young horse. He's definitely fitter, and he's not a, ch uh, he's a chance in this race at fairly nice odds too, around about 16 or 17 to 1. Okay, Jen, what is it in the Amy Victoria Derby for 1995? Well, I'm going with Gay Waterhouse. I think she's got a terrific chance here with number three, Nothing Like a Dane, from number one, Octagonal, and number 12, I've put in for third, Sir McQueen. Nothing Like a Dane for me, but will it be the Cox Plate winner, or will we see an upset? Candidates going to the barrier stalls now for the big race today. The Amy Victoria Derby will be back shortly. Spaces in the crowd here at Flemington today. Doesn't matter what side of politics you come from, or more importantly, your husband comes from. The Premier Jeff Kennett and Anita Keating, the Prime Minister. Well, they're starting to move in for the Derby. Simon Marshall's joining me now. There's Octagonal. Simon, first of all, congratulations on Aunty Mary. Well done, mate. Thanks, Pete. It was really fantastic. What do you make of the Derby? Derby's going to be a very tactical race. I think that um, Shane Dye, nothing like a day, is going to be a, a key factor in the race. A lot of the jockeys are going to be looking at him to make it, uh, to see whether Shane turns it into a sprinting affair or a staying affair. It's definitely going to shoot Shane Dye if it's going to be a staying affair, but uh, Octagonal's also the gun horse they're going to look out for. If it's a sprinting affair, well, he's just the gun horse with his uh, wafer age form from the Cox Plate. Finally, as they move in, I know you can't tip, but if I said to you, OK, you can go out and ride what you like now, what would it be? I'm sticking with JB Cummings on a roughy cattle and opening, mate. Good on you, Simon. Simon Marshall with his thoughts on the Amy Victoria Derby. There's Shane Dye about to get back on board with nothing like a Dane. Big loping stride, this horse. And he stands around in the middle here at Flemington almost asleep. I don't know whether you've seen him at all, Simon, but uh, when a jockey gets on his back, he looks a bit different. He does. I mean, he's a lovely big loping horse, very, very much a staying horse. But, um, you know, he, he, he's a type of horse that with his big stride and not being a slowly run race, he can get into a lot of trouble. So, you know, this horse can be beat, so can octagonal. And um, let's hope for the punters at home or the people sitting on their couch, look for cattle and opening and uh, we'll see if we're a good judge or not, Pete. Righto, Simon Marshall with his thoughts there. Quickly, let's go down to the betting ring. Terry Kennedy, any late moves? That is certainly the big move has been for Octagonal. It's around $2.80 on the tote at the moment, and that is exactly the price for bookmakers. If Octagonal can get the money with Shane Scriven, they face a massive payout here today. OK, it's the big one. The Amy Victoria Derby, a race first run in 1855. A race with a great tradition, and today it'll continue. Let's go out to the commentary box. Here's Dan Malicki. Thank you, Peter. Nothing like a Dane. Moving up. El Kahira's son is ready. And the field is ready for the Amy Victoria Derby of 1995. Light on. Racing in the Derby. Principality, one of the first to jump away with Catalan opening and Soft Coast is driving through on the inside. Now Burrito, who was a bit sluggish to begin, has ridden hard to try and find the lead. He'll be able to do that as they go past the winning post with a lap left to go. Burrito, ridden hard to find the lead from nothing like a Dane, going up wide to be second now. Principality on the outside of Soft Coast. Octagonal will settle down sixth on the inside of Catalan opening. One and a half lengths to Sir McWin and then came Donar on the rail. Two lengths to Sky Bow and Siri Nelk second last and Elke here is son last of all and about 12 lengths off the leader burrito and they're going along at a pretty reasonable clip for a 2500 meter race and burrito one of three horses from the john hawk stable leads at the 1800 meter point by three lengths nothing like a day in second a length and a half to principality and zoff coast was fourth one and a half to catalan opening fifth octagonal sixth on the rails two lengths away sir mcwin three quarters to donar one and a half to siri nelg then Skybo second last and two lengths away last of all Al Kahira's son and he is 12 lengths off the leader Burrito. They go up into the direction of the 1400 metre point and Burrito the leader by two and a half lengths to nothing like a Dane. One and a half lengths away racing third Principality. He races on the outside of Zoff Coast. One and a half lengths to Catalan opening fifth and a half a length away Octagonal in the all cerise colours sixth on the rails. One and a half lengths away Sir Macquin racing seventh and then came Donar as the speed slackens off a little bit of the 
1200. Then Siri Nelgen, Skybo back to the inside, second last, and Alcahira Sun last, but now only about 10 lengths off the lead. Burrito, three quarters of a length in front, nothing like a Dane has settled beautifully for Shane Dye. One and a half lengths away, Zoff Coast, one of the outsiders sitting third on the inside of Principality. Octagonal gets a little bit closer, he's up on the inside of Catalan opening. Two and a half lengths away, Donar, then Sir McWin, Siri Nelg, second last, Skybo, and last of all was Alcahira Sun. As they race up towards the home turn in the Amy Victoria Derby, of 1995 and that's Burrito by a half a length to nothing like a day in Catalan opening and Principality are off Octagonal gets away from the rail then came off coast Siri Nelg around the outside and Donar back to the inside of Sir McWin and Alcahira Sun and Skybow they're into the straight and nothing like a day and goes up to Burrito who's under plenty of pressure Catalan opening to the outside Octagonal's into the clear off coast trying to get through Donar run into a dead end it's nothing like a day in front Donar and now Octagonal are getting out nothing like a day in length in front, Octagonal coming at him on the outside, nothing like a Dane's on in front, Octagonal's not going to get him and nothing like a Dane has won the derby, nothing like a Dane beat Octagonal, third placing to Donar, then Skybo followed by El Cahira Sun, next in Catalan opening and then Zoff Coast followed by Sir McQuinn, Burrito, Principality and last was Siri Nell. Oh Dan look it was just a, a magnificent ride by Shane Dye. Octagonal, Shane Scriven had no luck on, he ridden the horse beautifully to the home corner, but in the straight there was just no room for him, he was going across the back of horses, and uh, nothing like a day in Shane Guy had driven him clear, and he just, uh, it was just a shame that he got beat. $3.30 and $1.40 approximately for nothing like a Dane, $1.40 for Octagonal, and $2.10 for Donar. Oh, it was written a treat on nothing like a day. And he settled so beautifully, Gary Willits. Uh, in second placing, he literally went to sleep. He looked to be travelling so comfortably. And uh, when it developed into the, the rush home it was, Octagonal had to give him just too big a break. Yes, well, Octagonal, he just didn't have any luck. He just, uh, Catlin opened and had him hemmed in on the fence. He couldn't get out. He had to wait there. And when the runs, uh, they just didn't come from, unfortunately. And the horse did a magnificent job to get as close as what he did to nothing like a day. Three, one, and four of the placings in the derby. Fourth in will be number eight, which is Sky Bow. And fifth, number six, El Cahira's son, who was a clear last on the home turn. But what a week for, uh, for Shane Dye. Virtually in one week, he's gone from uh, the most infamous jockey in the state to perhaps the most popular with his win on Octagonal in the Cox Plate last week. And soon as Octagonal had crossed the line and was the winner of the race, he had no concerns about making sure he was still riding nothing like a Dane. He didn't want to swap, and we can see why now. Oh, um, right. He's a great jockey. Okay, and Gay yeah, Waterhouse just wins the big ones all the time. This uh, this horse only having its first preparation, and it's uh, won its second Group One race in its last three starts. First preparation. Gay Waterhouse is the trainer. It'd be an enormous thrill for Gay, and nothing like a Dane's won its fifth race from seven starts, and at this point he's hit the lead. He definitely hit the lead here and got away. But you can see Octagonal in the cerise colours. He's just laying in a little bit here on top of these other horses. But uh, all the honours are with nothing like a Dane. He's had the perfect run. Skybo got checked there, the horse that ran fourth. Yes. Um, Octagonal is still just shifting in a little bit here. He's actually clear of these horses. But, oh, you know, he just had no luck from the home corner. Coming up to the 400, as nothing like a Dane was getting away. But mind you, it was a beautiful ride of Shane guys. Can't take anything away from him. Okay, Peter Donegan would have a very, very effervescent and bubbly uh, gay water house and what a tremendous thrill for a Pete. Yes, here she is, Dan. Unbelievable scenes down here in the mountain yard as you come down to us. Gay, what about that? Oh, it was exciting. It's every trainer's dream. They're just so exciting. And he rode him a treat. TJ said, don't get back too far. I've won too many of these dubs. Be in the box seat. And he was right. On to the Melbourne Cup now. Well, well let's, let's, let's just get this over. All right, well, it's going to be hard to keep track, but, Gay, but we're going to try and uh, do just that as the winner comes back to scale, nothing like a Dane. And it was a fantastic ride by Shane Guy. He summed up the pace beautifully. And as the horse comes back now, Gay rushing over to greet this derby winner. And now he's going to attempt to do what Skipton did back in 1941 to win the derby and to win the Melbourne Cup. Well, just incredible scenes. We know Gay's pretty excitable. I don't think I've ever seen her as excited as that. And now the clerk of the course, John Patterson, trying to get through to lead nothing like a Dane back. It is a, a real crush out there. And 
Shane Dyke coming back now. He'll get a great reception. Cap in the air. Full credit to Octagonal. He ran a mighty race. We knew that they were two great three-year-olds and they've proven it today with nothing like a Dane sitting in second place behind Burrito. The pace was quite solid. And then Dye made his move on the home turn and he gave Octagonal something to chase. The Cox Plate winner tried to run him down, but nothing like a Dane just had too much left. And so Shane Dye brings him back now with Gay Waterhouse. I don't know whether you saw Gay, but you can hardly see her face. She is so covered in lipstick. She took a long time to come down. And she'll take a long time to come down to earth. Denise Martin, her partner's over here. What about that? Oh, wasn't that fabulous? We just, uh, we were so excited. We thought he'd run a great race and uh, it was sensational, Peter. Absolutely sensational. What about Tuesday now, Denise? You have to ask the owners and the trainer. Well, we're going to do that in just a moment.